Samsung just dropped their brand new Galaxy XR headset and it marks a big moment for the entire industry. This is the first headset built on Android XR, the system Google, Samsung and Qualcomm have been secretly cooking up for the past few years. It's supposed to see what you see, hear what you say, track your hands, your gaze, even your expressions, and respond with Google's Gemini AI. So let's break it down with everything Samsung announced, from the hardware and features to the impressive yet concerning integration of AI. Let's get to it. The Galaxy XR is Samsung's first standalone mixed reality headset powered by Android XR, which is Google's spatial version of Android. They're calling it the first truly multimodal AI headset, meaning you can control it using your voice, hands, eyes, and even facial expressions all at the same time. And the pitch is ambitious. Comfort first design, real world understanding through a new perception system, and AI that actually understands what you're doing in real time. So let's start with the hardware because because they made some bold decisions that could bite them in the ass later on. It's powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 Plus Gen 2, which is roughly 20% faster on CPU and 15% faster on GPU than the chip in the MetaQuest 3, for example. You're also getting 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, so it's got laptop level memory for XR workloads. In terms of displays, we've got dual 4K micro OLEDs with 60, 72, or 90 Hz refresh rates, though it's it seems the 90Hz mode is locked behind a service request, so I'm thinking it's either because it will drain the battery incredibly fast or because such a large portion of the horsepower is taken up by Gemini. But we'll get to both of those in a moment. They're claiming around 109 degrees horizontal FOV and if that's accurate it's slightly wider than the Vision Pro which is definitely a welcome addition. Now I'm happy to see the industry adopting micro OLED more and more but Samsung is touting this as being a comfort first asset. Set. So hopefully it is actually comfortable enough to want to wear for more than 5 minutes at a time. The headset itself weighs about 545 grams with an external 302 gram battery pack that tethers by cable and connects via their proprietary power connector. Battery life is around 2 to 2.5 two hours but you can use it while charging or even plug in a separate USB-C power bank. Though it's not hot swappable and the headset's USB-C port can't even charge it because, you know, logic. Now I'm all for moving weight off the headset itself, but I would have honestly expected it to be lighter since the battery is external. And yeah, even for PC VR, you're still tethered to that external pack. When it comes to the glass, it uses pancake lenses with auto IPD adjustment thanks to the integrated eye tracking cameras, which can of course also be used for dynamic foveated rendering. The resolution of the screens is 3552 by 3840 per eye. Unfortunately, the head strap is not detachable and while it does come with magnetic forehead pads and optional light blockers, you'll pretty much be stuck with the form factor similar to the Quest Pro. Samsung also built in a tiny fan and venting system to keep heat off your face during longer sessions, something I wish more headsets did. Moving on to sensors, you've got iris unlock for logging in, eye and face tracking for avatars and foveated rendering, and even a 6 mic array with 4 speakers positioned for 360 degree spatial sound. Basically it's loaded with sensors, like 10 plus different kinds of them, just to make sure your environment, your face and your hands are all being tracked accurately. So if any of you were hoping to use this for any um, adult purposes, yeah, I wouldn't do that unless you want an immersive spatial recording of your nether regions on Google servers. Alright, now this next part is what makes Galaxy XR more than just a spec sheet, or potentially a privacy nightmare. At the center of it all is Google's Gemini, built right into the system. This thing reads your context, what app you're in, what you're looking at, even what's around you in the real world. So if you're in Google Maps, you can literally look at a restaurant and say, hey Gemini, show me the menu, and it'll pop up right next to you in 3D space. Or if you're editing a video in Adobe Pulsar, which by the way is exclusive to Android XR right now, Gemini can suggest text styles or transitions based on what it's actually seeing in your footage. It's like an assistant that's not guessing, it's watching, which is in equal parts incredible and horrifying. Welcome to the Black Mirror Starter Pack. Thankfully, Samsung also emphasized privacy. Supposedly, it'll ask for explicit permission before using things like eye or facial tracking and some processing happens on device. Though, to be fair, they didn't fully explain where that line is between local and cloud and and it doesn't mean that stuff which is processed locally 
doesn't later on get uploaded for quality improvement purposes. Here's where things get interesting though. Since it's built on Android, the Galaxy XR basically launches with millions of compatible apps on day one. Most regular Android apps just float in spatial windows. Think YouTube, Chrome or Reddit hovering around you like giant tabs. But Google and Samsung also rebuilt some of their biggest apps to feel native in 3D. And for those of you who like watching movies in a headset, Netflix is fully certified for 4K resolution on this device with a dedicated app for Android XR. YouTube and Google TV now also open in full immersive view. Google Maps lets you jump straight from a bird's eye city view into a 3D reconstructed street view complete with AI-generated indoor spaces as well. And Google Photos can literally convert your old 2D pics into 3D scenes or animated spatial videos. And I've gotta admit, that's pretty damn cool. And for power users, there's PC Link, which lets you pull your entire desktop into XR. Keyboard, mouse, multiple monitors, all floating around you like Tony Stark's workstation. It even supports virtual desktop, so you can go from productivity to gaming without taking the headset off, and with it having Wi-Fi 7 support, latency should be fantastic. But wait, you'd need controllers for gaming, right? Yes, and they did announce those too, which we'll get to in a second. Another notable yet copycat-like feature they teased is Likeness by Google, which builds your own realistic avatar using the face and eye tracking cameras. Now Samsung is also selling optional 3D OF controllers at 250 bucks a pair. They track optically and with IMUs, have analog triggers and even a touch-sensitive strip for scrolling. So solid design, but it's still wild that an $1800 headset doesn't include controllers by default. Imagine buying a console for $1800 dollars and then realizing the controllers are DLC. Samsung's clearly aiming for the premium but not Apple expensive zone. To soften that hit, they're launching what they call the Explorer Pack, about a $1,000 value bundle that throws in a year of Google AI Pro, YouTube Premium, Google Play Pass, YouTube TV and even some extras like NBA League Pass and Cough. Basically, they're handing you a digital lifestyle starter kit and saying, See, it's free stuff, not an $1800 purchase. So yeah, a lot to be excited about, but also a lot to test before anyone calls this the future of XR. So here's where I've landed. The Galaxy XR feels like Samsung's biggest swing at mixed reality since ever. It's not chasing Apple, it's trying to build something more open, more Android and more AI native. At half the price of the Vision Pro, it promises sharper OLED displays, actual gaming support and an ecosystem that already exists. But at the same time, it's still $1800 with a cable on your hip and an AI brain that might or might not be ready for prime time. If Samsung and Google nail the software, this could be Android's Vision Pro moment. If not, it's just a really expensive experiment. Either way, this is the start of something big. Android finally has its first real headset platform. Consider subscribing and hopefully Samsung actually replies to my email so I can test this myself.